Hello Exercises for Injuries blog readers. This is Rick Kasselge with another interview with a fitness professional and more of a performance specialist when it relates to assessment and exercise. So I'm interviewing Mike Robertson, uh, who is a performance or strength and conditioning coach in Indianapolis. And I'll get him to introduce himself and let us know a little bit more about him. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Rick. Uh, my name is Mike Robertson. I'm a strength coach and personal trainer from Indianapolis. Uh, I own a gym called Indianapolis Fitness and Sports Training, and uh, I also have a consulting and uh, fitness, uh, what's the, the good term, like a continuing education fitness site uh, of Robertson Training Systems. So I've got my hands in a little bit of everything. Okay, and we were chatting before the call that we were going to talk about assessment. So maybe you can let us know about, like, how does assessment fit into what you do? Sure. You know, the assessment, as I always tell people, whether it's a new client or just another exercise professional, is that the assessment really is the cornerstone for everything that we do. Uh, I know, for whatever reason, assessments nowadays are, are really taking a bashing and why do you need to assess? Why am I going to waste that hour? And I view the total opposite end of the spectrum because the assessment tells us so much about what our clients need. And our clients are very good at telling us what they want, whether it's uh, a six-pack or, you know, to lose body fat or to get stronger. But when it comes down to it, our job as a professional is to not only take what they want, but to take what they need and combine them together to give us an efficient program. And so the assessment really tells me what they need, what limitations they have, and it gives me an idea of the best way to address those issues before we ever even start on their exercise program. Okay, and then maybe you can give us a bit of a broad idea of, like, what are some of the assessments that you do with your clients? Sure. You know, we have a very broad assessment that we use at our gym, and we do everything from static posture shots, we use a gait assessment, we do manual muscle testing and manual uh, flexibility or mobility testing on a table, and then we even go as far as to incorporate you know, movement-based tests, whether it's an overhead squat, a lunge, a push-up. If they're an athlete, we'll do our best to either get some game footage or watch them actually play their sport in person, because the more information we have, the better our programming is. And I think too often people get so caught up in just one form of an assessment, whether it's just a static assessment or just a gait assessment or just, you know, the dynamic assessment as far as the squatting and the lunging patterns go, that you can miss the really critical parts of the equation. So if you give yourself all those different testing modalities, all of a sudden you've got a lot more comprehensive assessment and therefore you can develop a much more comprehensive program as a result. Okay, and then what are kind of some limitations, or what, like when, where do you see the boundaries of like a fitness professional or uh, a performance special uh, specialist when it relates to assessment? Sure, you know, I think people want this clearly defined line between uh, like a physical therapist job and a strength coach or a personal trainer's job, and it's, a, it's an issue because there is no dividing line. There's definitely an overlap between a physical therapist's job and a strength coach's job. And so when we look at that kind of situation, it's our job to figure out what is beyond our scope of practice. And I think the defining term for me anyway 
And do you have any last-minute tips for people when it relates to assessment? You know, what I always tell people is that your assessment should be as thorough as it needs to be. And what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes you may be able to put somebody on the table or watch them do an overhead squat and tell them immediately what they're lacking or what they need to address. But in that same breath, I tell you that my assessment is as thorough as it needs to be. And that simply means I'm going to take somebody, whether it takes me a half an hour, 45 minutes, or even as long as an hour, I'm going to put them through as many different tests as I deem necessary to get all the information that I need to write the best possible program. So don't fall into the trap. We kind of alluded to this before. Don't fall into the trap of you just need a static assessment or you just need a dynamic assessment. Use all the tools available and make your assessment as thorough as necessary to get the best possible training programs and outcomes. Okay. And, Mike, where can uh, people get more information about yourself and uh, your products and your services? Absolutely. The best place to find me online is www.robertsontrainingsystems.com. Again, that's robertsontrainingsystems.com. And there you'll find my blog, my newsletter. Uh, I do a podcast generally several times a month. And, again, just try and promote Perfect. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mike. And Exercises for Injuries blog readers and listeners, thank you very much for listening to this uh, interview. And I really recommend that you head to Mike Robertson's blog and sign up for his newsletter and frequently visit his blog because he gets tons of great information that will definitely help you in the work that you do. So this is Rick Cassell signing off. Take care and bye-bye.